Good afternoon, everyone. This is Cheryl Aronson from Arting Around, and today I'm going to be interviewing a very talented playwright, director, actor, and also he's a very dear friend, Levy Lee Simon. We're going to talk today about his new play, Heated Discussion. Okay, so Lee, mm-hmm. let's hear about writing this play. You said it took you two years. Yeah, um, it's a commission piece um, by the Roby Theatre Company. Um, uh, ben Guillory is the artistic director, producing director at the Roby Theater. He called me um, back in 2019 and said, Hey, Lee, I have a great idea for a play. And he pitched the idea to me. I thought it was fascinating and challenging. So I, I took it on. And um, it took a lot of work, a lot of research. You know, probably I say the toughest writing assignment that I've ever had um, because of the research, because after I said yes, then I said, oh my God, what did I do? (laughs) Well, we're going to talk about what this play is about. First of all, everyone, you can start to see this play this Saturday, April 9th, like Lee said, at the Roby Theater. Let's tell everybody where the play is, Lee. Yeah, the Roby Theater at Los Angeles Theater Center, 541 Spring Street, Mm -hmm. downtown L.A. Um, The play runs from Saturday, April 9th, 9th through May 15th. So it's a lot of time to see the play. Um, And I hear that it's going very well. I have not been involved in in that process, uh, rehearsal process, (laughs) but um, I'm excited to see it myself. (laughs) I know. So we're going to talk now about what this play is about. A heated discussion. Who or what people are having this heated discussion? And you said you had to choose from like 89 people. Well, when Ben proposed the idea, the idea was that we have uh, iconic black figures that have passed away Mm. that were impactful and when they were on the planet. And they're in a a setting where they are looking down on Earth and commenting on what the situation is with the the progress of uh, African Americans Mm -hmm on the planet and um so we had about 89 names originally and we dwindled it down to 12 Mm -hmm. plus we have um actually four orishas from the yoruba you know yemeya oshun oya and shango makes an appearance and um and they these icons are summoned by the orishas you know, in this ethereal setting, and when they appear. Um, so we have James Baldwin, we have Richard Pryor, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, Bob Marley, and Tupac. And then we have uh, Ida B. Wells, we have Nina Simone, we have Lorraine Hansberry, Zora Neale Hurston, Dr. Francis Quest Wilson, and uh, who am I leaving out? Oh, and Maya Angelou, of course, Maya oh, Angelou. The, right. Yes. Okay, so quite a cast of lofty characters here. Now, you had to kind of also be very serious. You have to know your music and philosophy. You have quite a cast of characters here. Well, the the problem... And after, funny with Richard Pryor. Well, <laughs> after I said yes, the problem was, like, how do I... How do I... Uh, promote or think that I would know what these characters would say, you know, and it was like, I, I can't do that. It was like, I'm not, I I'm, I think I'm a kind of smart guy, but I'm not that smart, <laughs> you know, and uh, they were all um, fascinating uh, people in their own right, and they left their legacy. But when I started to do the research, it was clear to me, I was like, oh, wait a minute, they already said it. Because the things that were problematic when they were on the planet are still problematic today. And it shows us that 
we have not made, we've made progress, but not that much progress. Because everything that they talked about is relevant to what's going on today. So when you were doing your research, Lee, did you take actual bits of dialogue from their mouths? Of, it could be speeches or things yeah. that they have said. Yeah, I, I researched and, you know, and I looked at speeches, I looked at quotes, you know, and I, I extracted the what I needed, you know, to come out of their mouths to create these dramatic scenes and these conflicts and these arguments mm -hmm. that were coming straight from their mouths, you know. So it was a very tedious work, um, and, um, and I spent a lot of time, you know, figuring, figuring, it's like a puzzle, figuring it out, you know, how to make these scenes work, how to make their, um, their actions, I mean, their, 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 their thoughts um, speak to what's going on today. So, you know, when, for example, when we have the incident of George Floyd and police brutality, and, you know, all of a sudden a lot of people are thinking, oh, this is something new. No, Malcolm X talks about right. what happened in 1964 in Harlem when a 14-year-old boy was shot dead and that led to the Harlem riots of 1964. Um, so the things he had to say about that riot and what happened in 1964 are directly, you know, correlating with what happened with George Floyd. Now, we have Richard Pryor in this play, so mm -hmm. um, I would think some humor is going to be uh, here. And, of course, we have to have humor to make things a little bit lighter and poignant, though. Well, I believe in humor, first of all, yes. and, and writing all my, all my work, you know. And usually it's not, I don't write comedy. It comes out of the life experience. But I think in this play, because of the heaviness of the subject matter, we needed to have a comic relief. And, you know, Richard Pryor, <laughs> he says some stuff that, you know, I put into the play that works, you know, to give us a moment to just laugh and breathe and go, ah, oh, before we get back to the heavy stuff. Okay. Yeah. So did anybody stand out for you more than any other character? And did any character that you were writing really surprise you as you were writing it? Um, surprise me? I, I, I know... Um, because they all were so distinctly different, and that's why we chose the characters that we chose. Some of the stories are, um, or some of the information, I should say, um, is more impactful in, in some ways, like uh, Ida B. Wells tells the story of uh, a woman who, well, you know, Ida B. Wells was a, was a journalist and back at the turn of the century who wrote a lot about all the lynchings that were going on. And she tells a story about the lynching of a woman. And it's it's black woman. It's it's just, it'll be one of the showstoppers. You know, I'm not going to give it away. Right, right. Um, but, um, and, and, you know, Tupac, you know, who we all, well, I know, I knew, I knew him personally. Oh. But, but um, yeah, I think people love Tupac, you know. Um, or you love to hate him. I don't know, but but, but you know he his uh, he was so raw, so political, you know, and and so we get that impact in the play. We get mm -hmm. the impact of Malcolm X's Malcolm X's ferocity, and we get um, Martin Luther King's passion, and and um, we get the intellectual you know, analytical mind of someone like Lorraine Hansberry, you know, or the the down the earth earthiness of someone like Zora Neale Hurst Hurston, you know, who I think was a woman who was underrated because she in many ways was ahead of her time, you know, when she was on the planet. Um and um yeah, so I could go on and on. But I know. but um Okay. <laughs> so it's kind of and, and heated discussion. Okay, so let's talk about the title of the play. Obviously, they're going to be talking about very heated subjects, but can you say more about this title? Well, when Ben um, proposed the idea to me, he already had the title okay. in mind. So, and 
it, it indicates like that there is differences between these icons and how they would go about um, creating solutions, solving the problems, looking at the issues. And so this would create this combustible, heated discussion. You know, I also had a subtitle that was like, what would they say? You know, um, because the question is, what would they say? You know, what would these be icons who are looking down on earth, who, who dedicated their lives for, you know, the uplifting and the changing mm -hmm. of, of black folk on the planet, you know, what would they say about some of the things that are going on? And it's not always directed at the white majority. It's right. also directed at black people, like what our responsibility is. What did we do to, you know, uplift ourselves and to move forward ourselves? And and so there's all of that going on here. It's, it's um, fascinating. Yeah. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and when we go see a play, it's usually the, um, you know, we have one or two characters that are going to go through the arc and they're going to meet a challenge and they're going to change. But this seems like this is an open discussion. So are these characters helping each other change or are we just, leaving this open so the audience can think more about all these issues? I think that, um, first of all, it's an ensemble piece, so yes. there's no one central character. They're yes. all, you know, as a group, the central character. Yes. And um, they all have, like I said, different viewpoints and different ways of looking at it. So the question is, and by the end, how, how do we come together? you know, to create something that we as a people can look at and say, okay, this is the, the direction that we need to go in. And uh, I think that's where, that's what the play's about. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so it's a little bit different. Now, in other plays I know you have, you incorporate some music and you do have some music figures in this play. Are we going to hear music in the background or you can't say? Oh, no, there's always music. Uh, I don't know what that music is because I haven't oh, been right. involved in, mm -hmm. the, in the process um, directly. Um, but, you know, when you have Nina Simone. Yes, of course. <laughs> you yeah. know, you, 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 there's actually there is one two songs that are written into the play, okay. one that Nina um, plays and one that Bob Marley plays. Oh, that's right, Bob Marley, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. All right, so anything else you want to say about a heated discussion that you think is important for us to know? Um, come and see it. Th this will be something you've never seen before, that's for sure. You know. Um, these all of these iconic figures you know in one place you know i think it's dramatic just seeing them walk out onto the stage mm -hmm. and let alone what they have to say and um and they have a lot to say in this play <laughs> you know and it gets it does get heated you know that was that's the intention that it gets heated and it gets hot and that the audience take all of that in um so you know, I always feel like when I write a play, I want the audience to have an, an experience that is not just a play, it's an event. And so when they leave, they leave different than when they walked in. We love that. Mm -hmm. That's the best way to see yeah. <laughs> a play. I have one last question. So if you were standing on stage, you were now a character as who you've been all these years as a playwright, actor, writer. <laughs> How do you think you would have said, what would you say? How would you contribute to this? Oh my God. Um, well, you know, <laughs> my history and being raised in Harlem, you know, during the Black Liberation Movement and all that, you know, I, I would, I'm on the more, uh, more of the militant side. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there comes a point where um, I think we have to be um, active in in creating change, and sometimes that's not always going to be easy, and uh, it might require um, I'm not going to say violence, but right. it, it it might require 
you know, no fear. Okay. You know, yeah. do it, do it. Like, as, as Malcolm X said, by any means necessary. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Lee has used his pen quite a bit to uh, entertain us throughout the years. Thank you so much, oh, Lee. We're looking you. so much to see this play. April 9th is when it opens at the Roby Theater. Thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. Okay. Thank you for having me. Yeah.